outgoing Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's office announcing Pennsylvania Senator-elect Dave McCormick is now invited to today's Senate orientation. Madeline Rivera has the breaking update from Washington. Maddie. Hi, guys. Good morning. Well, we wondered if something like this would happen this morning. There is so much we're watching, not just here at the White House, but down the street on Pennsylvania Avenue. So Congress is back for the first time since before the election. And one of the first orders of business for the Senate is freshman orientation for senators elect. So a huge update this morning. A spokesperson for Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says Republican Dave McCormick and Democrat Ruben Gallego have both been invited to orientation. Neither of the two had been prior to to today. The Associated Press declared Gallego the winner of Arizona's Senate race this morning. The AP, though, had called the race for McCormick on Thursday, but Pennsylvania's Democratic incumbent Senator Bob Casey has not yet conceded. Schumer's prior refusal to invite McCormick because of outstanding ballots in the Keystone State drew the ire of some Republicans who said they would stand by McCormick and would personally escort him into the Capitol today. So it appears there is no longer any need for that. And have Happening tomorrow, the secret ballot election for GOP leader. The contenders to replace Mitch McConnell include Senators John Thune, John Cornyn, and Rick Scott. Many Trump supporters have thrown their weight behind Scott. This morning, though, North Dakota Senators Kevin Kramer and John Hoven tell Fox they'll support Thune. Kramer and Hoven are touting their long personal relationships with Thune. The winner tomorrow needs 27 of 53 GOP votes. Lauren, Steve, Ainsley, and Brian. Thanks, All right. Buddy. Thank you very much. Well, it looks like he yeah. had a change of hearts, and he's doing the right Chuck? thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been called. The race has been called. There's no pathway. It's time to let people get, get to work. It's kind of hard to criticize the former president about the transition of powers and, you know, unity, unity, unity when they're, they were blocking it. So he did the right thing. Well, and ultimately, he's going to be able to sit down with people, a lot of people he's never met before, and he's he's winding up uh, going to the Senate for this orientation today. Uh, you know, originally, Mike Lee was going to squire him around, but he's right there uh, as this Senate leadership battle is heated. And we just saw Matt, uh, Matty talk a little bit about a couple of uh, Republicans who have come out in favor of Thune. So, you know, suddenly Dave McCormick is going to be one of the guys who's going to be voting. Guy, just because the guy who lost doesn't concede doesn't mean the guy who actually won. The AP's already called it. Lots of liberal outlets have already called it. Uh, Dave McCormick will be the new senator from PA. So because he won, he should be allowed to go to orientation. 100%. Schumer shouldn't stop him from that. Well, you know, a lot bad. of people, uh, number one, I did not know it was important. I thought it was ceremonial, but Senator Sinema yesterday they said it yeah. was extremely valuable. I got to get off on the right foot. I yeah. got to staff and get ready. Now, Steve, you said that Chuck Schumer doesn't come on my radio show. And he probably won't do it. And you said you essentially have never invited him. But that's my fault. And now I realize he's probably a viewer. Because a second ago, or 15 minutes ago, I asked <laughs> Bernie, Mor uh, Bernie Moreno. Like, mm -hmm. is, is Chuck Schumer actually going to uh, block uh, Dave McCormick? Because he's in Washington. I thought, is, is he actually going to come there? Could we see a big confrontation? Watch. You know, this is a time for the country to come together, and Chuck Schumer can be that agent to bring the Democrat Party to together to help us in the Republican Party get things done for the American people instead of being a partisan hack. So he's got two hours left where he can show that he actually cares more about the country than he cares about politics, and I'm so optimistic that he will. Dave McCormick will be the next senator from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He's here in D.C. I was with him last night. He's going to do a great job for this country. Well, the so, Democrats and then he went on to say he's coming, and I go, could this be like a fight? Mm -hmm. well, you know, Chuck and, Schumer's thugs against the muscle <laughs> of uh, Dave McCormick. Didn't Kamala, in her concession speech, didn't she say, we're going to be the party that allows for peaceful and easy transitions? The power. So let him go to the orientation. I'm glad Schumer had a change of heart. Also, Dave McCormick will be able to vote for the Senate leadership tomorrow. Yeah. That happens at 9.30. So now the, the balance of power in the Senate is set. Uh, the Republicans, this is great news for them. They got 53. They can pretty much do whatever Donald Trump uh, passes their way once they work it out with the House. The House, however, is a little more complicated. Yeah, it looks right like now, Right now, the Republicans, Lawrence, have 214. You need 218. The Democrats have 205 at this point. But you can see in the middle, there are still 16, the, the white ones, uh, the little dots right there. There are 16 races remain. The Republicans need four. The Democrats need 13. Now, here's the thing. When you look at the number of 214, keep in mind, two of those Republicans are going to go to the White House to work for Donald Trump, Elise Stefanik and Michael Waltz. 
So they've got to come up with a, a, a little more cushion before they can it's, feel it's comfortable. It's likely that the House will win. Uh, Republicans yeah, will win, right? Right, it is. It, but here's the problem. Majorities are precarious because lawmakers get sick. They die. They get indicted. Uh, you Yikes. Can't, yeah, you can't always count on it. Is they suddenly retire. Yeah. So if they have only got a, a one or two vote margin, if I'm in the administration trying to get stuff through the House, it's like, I don't know. What if somebody calls in sick? What if COVID sweeps through mm -hmm. the Senate? We can't pass fill in the blank. They said there's some key races yet to be called. In Alaska, uh, there's a tight battle between Mary Sadler and Nick Begich, uh, the entrepreneur. We know that name. Uh, the Arizona 6th District, but California's 13th and 47th, and Colorado's 8th. Those are the ones that people really can't get a hold of who's going who's gonna to go. Uh, but it's just going to be interesting. They say the Fox Republican, Fox is told from Ch uh, Chad Program that the majority can lose no more than two House members to the Trump administration. Those are the two. And those are the two. They were already gone uh, because, like, they have to have Which quick elections. They're already Marco. talking about with the vacancy with Marco Rubio that in the it Senate. could be in the Senate <laughs> one of the representatives, a few right. of the representatives are up for that job as well. You see what I'm saying? Ron DeSantis will have an appointment. One of the people on the list is Byron Donaldson. So that's another seat. Well, or, right. I mean, they have a heavy bit, bench when it comes to... Uh, the Republicans in in Congress right now. A absolutely. For, for a, Florida. A, another great uh, suggestion, and I'm sure that uh, the governor down in, in uh, Florida has thought about it, is Brian Mast. Right. Uh, Brian Mast is fantastic. And the key to all these faces that we've shown you is they are all in Donald Trump's lane. They, mm -hmm. you know, in the past, some of them might not have been completely on mm -hmm. the Trump turnpike, but now they are. And so that's going to make his job easier as he tries with his 100-day agenda. He's going to try to do something about the taxes, about energy, and about the border. Two words stand out from this talking point for me. Squire okay. and um, Squire Turnpike. And Turnpike. Okay. Very, don't, you, don't you think those are two <laughs> no. great words? How do you think I get to work? <laughs> like, you know, to squire them around. I well, my daughter that. is an Esquire. She's a lawyer. Your wow. son is going to be an Esquire, too. <laughs> Five months. Five months. <laughs> Just it's, add an S in front of the squire. I'm sorry, you were going to say something. I, just, I was just going to say, Elise Stefanik, so yesterday people in the diner were asking me, they said, um, is she really going to be the U.N. ambassador? Because if she does, her seat's open. Kathy Hochul, Democrat's going to fill that seat, even though it's a Republican area. And I was saying maybe it's just to say thank you for all your support, but I, don't, I can't imagine that she would take that and leave her, her seat empty. But it turns out she is good for her, proud of her. She's a hard worker, smart as heck, went to Harvard, um, and I really support her. But what happens with her seat? Plus 10. Kathy, it's a plus well, there's 10. There's still going to be a special election. There right. will be. Kathy In 90 Hochul, days. So there'll yeah. be a Republican running against a Democrat. Correct. Okay, yeah. so Kathy Hochul doesn't safe. just but it's put a, something It in. seems safe. Yeah. Okay. Because, because it's a Republican area. At least Stefanik won 63% right. of the vote Correct. just last week. Got it. Okay, then that yeah. works out. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.